Hello, I'm Georgia Raisman, and I'm here on Front Up today with John Flores, a Republican candidate for state senate here at, uh, on the Cape and Islands. Thank you for coming today, and I'd like to start for with you telling me a little bit about who you are, how sure. you got here, how you got into politics. Sure. Well, first of all, good morning, Georgia, and thank you for the opportunity to be here and uh, have a chat with you and some of the folks who hopefully will be watching. Um, as you've already mentioned, my name is John Flores, and I am the Republican candidate for Cape Cod and the Islands. I'm really running as the bipartisan common sense candidate, if you will, which for me translates to being someone who is fiscally conservative, meaning spend what we can afford, but socially I'm extremely moderate. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Um, I have a lot of real life experience uh, as a former teacher, former educator, I'm a retired school superintendent, retired college dean. Um, I've been in the business world, uh, running two companies, so I know what it is to meet a payroll, I know what it is to pay the taxes, uh, I know what it is to uh, try and be successful in both the downturn of, a, of an economy as well as a, a, a booming economy, which I think reflects a lot about what, what Nantucket has been over the years. Sometimes there's a boom, sometimes there's a bust <laughs> here on Nantucket, and so uh, I think I have a good sense of uh, what is needed. Uh, in order to be successful, uh, representing, if you will, the folks of Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket. And you uh, sound like you sound like a moderate Republican. I'm extremely. Have, I am. Uh, whom we have so few these days. Yes, I'm not. Uh, I, you know. You know. I think there are um, <coughs> ideologists on both sides of the aisle uh, who take politics to an extreme, uh, both on the left side of the aisle as well as the right side of the aisle. I'm pretty much a center, a center right kind of guy. Um, I don't. Uh, um, I, I don't embrace. Uh, everything that the Republicans say. I don't embrace everything that the Democrats say. For many years, I was a Democrat. I grew up in a Democratic household, but I'm one of those folks where I didn't leave the Democratic Party. It left me, so to speak, in terms of some of the directions that it was taking, and especially uh, the, the, the Democratic Socialists that really are directing the Democratic Party today in a direction that I don't think is healthy for Cape Cod of the Islands or for the country in general. But I've had a uh, lifelong affair with uh, Nantucket. Uh, uh, Martha's Vineyard uh, and uh, Cape Cod in general. Um, I'm a fourth generation uh, family member. Uh, my family is from Provincetown originally. Um, both my uh, great grandparents, uh, grandparents as well as my, my dad's family, uh, all born and brought up uh, in P Town. And then the family spread out to West Barnstable and to Nantucket. So I had the great fortune of knowing this island back in the 50s when I was a child. Uh, playing uh, not only Little League, but uh, I can remember back in the day diving for coin when the boats came in. Oh, very, uh, and very different a island than very now. Very different island now. I'm talking before Walter Barnicky uh, wow. discovered Nantucket yeah. and uh, really changed the look, face, and yeah. feel, if you will, of downtown yeah. Harbor yeah. Uh, long before the development just uh, sort of uh, exploded, if you will, uh, into what it has become today. But, you know, getting back to the initial question, how did I get involved in politics? I have always been socially involved. Uh, I have always been um, ready, willing, and able to give. I'm a giver. That's why I went into the education business. I was a very successful teacher and coach and, and school superintendent. And running for our public office really was uh, at the request of so many folks who I know on Cape Cod as well as Nantucket. Um, uh, I was uh, encouraged, uh, if you will, uh, uh, to put my hat into the ring. What um, was your first public office? Um, first public, I actually, uh, I ran for, I was actually uh, appointed in offices, uh, mm -hmm. to be quite frank. I ran for an office early on back in the 70s um, and withdrew because of work-related conditions. Uh, but I was appointed by uh, the first public office I had, besides being a school superintendent, which is, which is a public figure, I was uh, appointed uh, as executive director of a couple of state agencies, the Mass Quasi Public Planning Council, uh, as well as uh, the Mass Corporation for Educational Telecommunications. And that was during the Weld Salucci administrations back in the early 90s. Uh, at the same time I was doing that, I was running some campaigns for friends of mine who uh, lived in Boston, uh, actually Democratic candidates uh, uh, who were successful. Um, and so I've always had an interest in politics. I've always had an opinion, if you will, uh, trying to help those that really need help, uh, trying to encourage strong business growth, but at the same time making sure that we have a social service network that helps those folks that really need it. Um, and so I've been a giver all my life, and this was a natural extension uh, when I was encouraged by folks, not only from Nantucket, but from up and down Cape Cod, from family members, to say, John, we would encourage you to do that. Uh, so for me, uh, my life has always been about public service. And so this is an extension of it. I am uh, uh, retired this past year, um, semi-retired, if you will. I still do a, a lot of online teaching uh, at the university that I was affiliated with, um, which you can do from anywhere in the world. Uh, when I was dean down at 
Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, so I come really with, a, I think, a very strong resume, a real life resume, uh, being a parent, a grandparent, uh, having grandchildren. I want to be sure that the beauty that I knew of uh, Cape Cod and uh, the islands uh, is maintained and, su and sustained for them, uh, for their grandchildren. Uh, uh, and we continue uh, to have, if you will, uh, this beautiful peninsula as well as these two beautiful islands uh, near so, Tuckerman and so Vineyard. Where, where, where do you see the, the challenge in, in what our current state, state senator is not doing? What do you think you would be doing better than he? Uh, in terms of a number of different issues, first, uh, you know, uh, being a bar an elected Barnesville Town Councilor, I understand uh, all of the critical issues that we face in Cape Cod i.e. water and wastewater related issues, uh, opioid related issues, um, support for business and infrastructure related issues, technology related issues, and I don't think really any of that has been addressed in an appropriate way. Um, How do you see the state uh, helping in those, in those uh, areas? Well, you have to make sure that you, get, you have to get legislation passed uh, at the local level as with support of the state level. You have to be able to reach across the aisle uh, and work both partisan and nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't necessarily be uh, an ideologue uh, just promoting one particular interest, one particular direction. And I think that's what my opponent um, um, is, uh, is basically uh, basing his reputation on. I mean, he wants to make us a sanctuary state. He wants to have safe injection sites. He's voted many, many times against strengthening the criminal justice bill as opposed to weakening it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think overall, um, I bring, um, really the big difference is I really bring a lot of real life experience. Uh, he's a fellow that uh, more often uh, than one occasion has suggested that you know, people over the age of 50, 55, uh, really shouldn't be in politics that, uh, you know, he's looking for the younger generation to take over. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't necessarily disagree that we need young people in politics, but I think we need young people with experience. And, you know, the, the definition of senator is someone that is usually older, someone usually has a little more wisdom, a little bit more experience. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it comes from the Latin word sensori, which basically yeah. is, uh, uh, old, exactly, yeah. meaning old. Um, so I don't feel old. I'm, you know, I'm right. not, I feel very young at heart. And uh, calendar-wise, I'm, I'm still very young. I have a lot more to give. Uh, but I have that real life, uh, practical and pragmatic uh, perspective on life that I don't think uh, someone who's 30 years of age has. Um, you know, I tell folks, you know, I know that, you know, when I was 30 years old, uh, I was a young guy. I was a teacher and coach back at that time. And I probably thought I was the smartest guy in the room. But, you know, it's amazing 35 years later what I learned over 35 years in terms of real common sense, uh, everyday doing life, the ups and downs of life. Uh, the successes of life as well as, you know, some of the tragedies that some of us have, have faced over time. So I think it makes me a, a more empathetic, a more well-rounded candidate uh, than currently what and we in, have. And current issues that face the island and things that we are worried about here, and you know that, well, the main thing that's going to come out of my mouth is housing. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think you can address that in a way that Julian here perhaps has not? Well, I think housing overall, uh, we need to figure out uh, where we can put workforce development housing, where we can put affordable housing, but it has to be done in partnership uh, with the residents of the town. And when we look at this 40B project that's been ongoing here uh, for uh, probably the past six months that has really created a groundswell of opposition uh, uh, from everyone, it, it seems like, uh, not only the tradesmen, but the people who live here on a regular basis. I think we need to put our ear to the ground, listen to the folks, look at locations where we can probably make that happen, but also realize that this is a changing island. You know, when you think of, uh, when you think of Nantucket, you know, probably only 35% of the folks who come here on an annual basis are year-round residents. That means the 65% of the properties that, you know, probably are available for some kind of a rental during the course of the winter, perhaps at a, uh, perhaps at a, uh, at a market rate or below market rate, depending on where one is uh, based on their income. But overall, long-term, long-term solutions are going to take, if you will, uh, a charrette of, 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 of folks coming from different aspects of the island to help solve this, especially, you know, when you look at the median price uh, of an Nantucket piece of property now being around a million, $1.1 million. When you look at police, when you look at teachers, which I was, when you look at fire, when you look at the people who are the community, uh, if you will, it's pretty difficult to, to, to be able to enter, enter the market. And so you have that infamous uh, Nantucket shuffle, you know, every April, every May, where people are scrambling to look for uh, to look, to look for uh, housing. So you've got to address it in terms of A, finding locations that the public will, uh, that the public will accept, and then ultimately building uh, affordable housing uh, uh, that works within the community so, so that it's not necessarily so big, so large, that it's alienating people, uh, that it's not creating uh, traffic-related issues, water-related issues, gas-related issues, lighting-related issues, related which sewer-related issues, sewer issues yeah. you know, which this 40B project, uh, when you listen to all of the people who are part of that tippingpoint.org group, 
uh, are basically you know stressing on a, on a on a daily basis. You know, I went to one meeting um, uh, with the zoning board and listened to a lot of questions, uh, a lot of. Uh, criticisms, if you will, uh, couched as questions uh, in terms of uh, what's wrong with this particular project. And I'm a pro-development guy, but there's good development and there's, there's bad development. And I think you somewhere, you know, you have to find that common ground where people are going to support uh, what it is. I mean, when you, when you look at this particular project, yeah, there's X amount of units that are going to be part of the 40B plan. That's what gets you into the 40B plan and allows you to bypass, if you will, um, right. you know, zoning rules and regulations. But at the same time, you have to be sensitive, I think, to what's going to happen in the neighborhood, you know, and uh, having lived in this island for a number of years. Uh, That's uh, not sensitive. Um, this is not sensitive. It's, it's not sensitive. Uh, you know, I get what the folks are, are, are concerned about. I get what the folks are, are speaking about, and I would, I support them 100%. I think you need to also look at 40B. Mm -hmm. and we know that this is an uphill struggle. I mean, this is really an issue where you've got to reach across the island, Boston, and you have to deal with developers and real estate people who are going to come down hard against any changes to the statute itself. But the statute itself can be tweaked in a way that can help Nantucket. We have, we've discussed this before, we have covenant houses here, which are houses that are restricted right. in their pricing and their, develop, their future development once they're sold. They're not included in what's called our safe harbor. Correct. That could be a statutory amendment, and that Correct. should be something that that should be fought for. And somebody should say, "I'm going to I'm going to try to tweak that." Well, I'm the guy. Workforce who's housing of the sort that mm -hmm. you were talking about might be something that should be included in the 40B statute of, st of safe harbor. Who's going to do that for well, us? Well, you know, if I if and when I'm elected as state senator, that's going to be one of my first issues. Uh, not uh, not only water and wastewater and opioid related issues across the Cape, but affordable housing because it's not only impacting Nantucket. It's in, uh, well, I live in Barnstable. Uh, it's impacting uh, Cape Cod as a whole. Uh, the younger generation cannot afford to stay in the Cape. Uh, we also have to attract, uh, if you will, an economy that supports. Uh, middle-income folks that they can so that they can um, have enough income to purchase but when you look at the 40b um, law as a whole and if memory serves me correct that was passed back in 1969 as an anti-snob zoning yeah. law yeah. Um, and it hasn't really changed that much there's been almost a couple of takers almost, almost not at all yeah. so we have to look at this from you know 2018 from 2018 to 2019 and on and say the world has changed. Property values have changed. Locations have changed. How and do we tweak this? Changed, attitudes have changed. We are not. A, I don't think we are a not in my backyard community. Yeah. We, every, from everything you hear, we are a yes in my backyard community. Well, but one one thing I found is that you know I don't think appropriate. I couldn't agree more. I think uh, if there's one thing I learned about Nantucket when I lived here is that. Nantucket are probably the most generous the year round as well as the summer people they're probably some of the most generous giving people I've yep. ever met in my life and nobody doesn't want to help those people that need right. legitimate help right. I mean, that's just being a fellow good human being which I think we all are but at the same time we cannot exploit a system so that folks if you will can come in and take advantage if you will of a, of a, of a particular piece of property and turn it into a neighborhood that 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 is to be versus yeah. what it once was in well, terms and of that overtaxes the infrastructure which is totally. another, another issue can that's a very aid? critical issue then can there be state more state aid for infrastructure well of course there can be but you have to be sure that you have the right folks at the right place at the right time uh, you've got to convince uh, you know the, the those who are in leadership you know whether it be uh, in the Senate side it would be the Senate president chairman of ways and means but other ways too. If it, what I found working with the legislature when I was in state government, if it is a common sense approach and it's not necessarily biased towards one side of the aisle or another, people yeah. listen. And I think that's what I have um, as a, um, you know, as, as, as a real life experienced person, the ability to bring forward. I serve, I serve now on the, uh, on the Cape Cod Community College Board of Trustees. I'm the governor's representative to the Nuclear Decommissioning Panel that's shutting down Pilgrim Nuclear. I have a common sense approach and an awareness of everything that's going on within our communities, within our environment. And I think I can bring that forward uh, when I become the next state senator, reaching, reaching across the aisle. Because, you know, affordable housing is not a Democratic issue. It's not a Republican issue. It's a, it's, it's a human, it's a it's a human needs, issue. common sense issue. And, but we have to approach it from a common sense perspective. Same thing with I mean, infrastructure. We have, sewer, we have sewer beds. Look people. at what happened. Uh, we have sewer pipes that are from the 1920s and earlier. I and mean, that's a critical issue. Sense, critical, that's a critical non, issue across non, the board. That's a partisan issue. Yeah, I work closely with, uh, with uh, the Department of Public Works and Barnstable, being a Barnstable 
town council, making sure that our infrastructure is not only uh, up to speed, but is being upgraded on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We're right now replacing, if you go over to Hyannis, if you jump on the boat and, and, and uh, go over to Hyannis, you look at Main Street, we're replacing all of the water mains mm -hmm. uh, on Main Street because they're like, they're, they're like Nantucket, hundred, almost you know, a couple hundred years old. You have to have that maintenance program set in place. I'm not suggesting that Nantucket doesn't. I think Nantucket and its wastewater uh, foreman and, and their employees have done a, 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 a wonderful job, job yeah. especially when you look at the at the at yeah. the uh, at the at the tragic uh, ex, uh, yeah, last, uh, breakdown last of that winter. pipe last gosh, winter. I mean, they turned that day. right around. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was really impressed with a the immediate response, yeah. b the yeah. way these guys and gals yeah. stepped up and fixed it and worked it, and now it's yeah. obviously it's yeah. going to be long term repair. But that's a long term kind of uh, kind of uh, plan that needs to take place and. Uh, you know, Nantucket needs to uh, needs to be sure that they're doing that. And I know that you know you now have a you know a new uh, a new board of selectmen, if you will. I've met them, uh, some of them through the uh, the association uh, yeah, that's uh, the Cape Cod uh, the Cape Cod Councilors and Selectmen's Association. Right. We meet uh, once a month on a Friday morning, uh, usually over in uh, Hyannis or Falmouth, and the Nantucket and Vineyard folks come over. And you know, I've had the the the, the well, opportunity to read Rita Higgins, I believe. Board, yeah. Is, yeah, Rita is a oh, terrific. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Jason, Jason uh, Bridges. Yeah, Jason no, Bridges. We have two a great ter select board. Two Matt, terrific. Matt Fee, who's coming yeah, here Matt later Fee. this morning. Two, uh, you know, terrific folks who are, who are committed to making sure that the quality of life on Nantucket uh, just continues to improve. Uh, and I look forward to working with them. I, you know, I've, I've, I've had many conversations with Rita at, at the... Uh, at, at the uh, board meetings over in uh, over on uh, in Hyannis, and you know, I know how committed these folks are developing not only short-term plans but long-term plans right. to make sure that you know, as Nantucket grows, as it continues to grow, um, uh, that everything is covered from an infrastructure perspective. But right now, getting back to the tipping point uh, issue. Um, you know, that development on the corner of South Shore and Surfside, you know, really needs to, I, I think two things need to happen. It needs to be downsized, which I don't think, obviously, the developers want, because probably there's not, well, at the end of the day, enough profit. you may not know. They, they have just recently okay. proposed, for, for the next uh, meeting, which is on October 3rd, they've proposed a 100 unit instead oh. of 156 unit, well, which is up on the town website. It's okay. worth looking at. Well, that's a it's step in the right a direction. step in the right direction. <laughs> it's not far enough, but it is sure. a step in the right sure. direction. Sure, But um, it's, all, it's all a formal almost like a minuet isn't it i mean we say they say this we say that they right. say this we say that and hopefully it's the out of negotiation getting to yes yes that's what it yeah, comes and, down and to and it's something for us to start discussing that's not way out here but sure. it's not really where we would well, like even to as be. part of that um you know it's interesting you know i am truly committed uh, to, to the successful future of Cape Cod and the islands. And, you know, this is just one aspect, you know, infrastructure right. is a critical issue. But I go back to water and wastewater. You know, without quality water on, 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 on the islands, as well as on Cape Cod, we, we we're done. We don't have a future. Right? We don't have a future right. at all. And that includes everything from, you know, stormwater runoff to, you know, the way people treat lawns to, uh, to you name it. And we've got to get that under control so that obviously we maintain the quality and we keep nitrogen um, under right. control, if you will. Uh, well, that's a big problem we have over on the Cape yeah. side, but same we have yeah. it here. And we have the issue of uh, the scallops, too, yes. which, which you know, a lot of people attribute to the nitrogen runoff into the harbor, the declining scallop uh, it's, harvest it's from year to year, which has been a disaster for our, our, our scallopers. Not only scallopers, but fishermen in general. Fishermen. I mean, you have, uh, I come from a fishing family. Uh, my whole family were, was in the fishing business. Mm -hmm. I still have a cousin on island who, uh, who uh, fishes uh, on a regular basis. and. Uh, there's nothing more delicious and nothing more delectable than a Nantucket Bay scallop. And uh, it's up to us to make sure that we protect, if you will, the fragile infrastructure. We talk about infrastructure in terms of roads and right. pipes. There's an infrastructure that also applies to, a, a, you know, an ecological infrastructure that applies to our estuaries, to our bays, to our rivers, to right. our ponds, to our lakes. And we have to be sure that we maintain and preserve the integrity of those, not only for ourselves for enjoyment, but again, I go back to the future for our children, right. for our grandchildren, for our, our grandchildren's children. Uh, it's a critical issue. So we have a we have an incredible responsibility uh, in order to make sure that and we maintain do think, that. Do you think the state is doing enough? Do you think that there are play, ways? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, you know, I think there's more monies that could that could be uh, that could be uh, brought back. There's bond bills that have been filed, bond bills you know that have been signed and passed. But the problem with bond bills, you know, they're nothing more than credit lines mm -hmm. uh, on a credit card. It doesn't mean because you have a hundred million dollar bond bill. Um, we have a couple uh, right now. We have an economic bond bill. We have an uh, environmental bond bill. It has certain line items, you know, outline if they ever get funded. What happens lots of times with bond bills is that 
um, sitting senators and sitting representatives just put things in there so they can go back to the local community and say, oh, I got $20 million for X, I got $10 million for Y. But that just means that they wrote that line item into the bond bill and maybe it will get funded, maybe it won't. There's lots of bond bills that that Well, that, how does that the funding happen then? I'm sorry? How does the funding happen the, then? The, the executive branch has to authorize it. And so I have a very close, I have a very good relationship with the governor, Charlie Baker. Mm -hmm. uh, he's endorsed my candidacy uh, along with uh, Sheriff Jim Cummings, mm -hmm. uh, who's uh, Sheriff of So if of you were to put County. in a bond bill item for scalp sure. enrichment or harbor pretty, well, enrichment if, or you know, sewer, if the, sewer if the legislature, upgrades. you know, if the legislature uh, approved it and sent it to the governor's office, uh, I'm sure that I could probably uh, sit down judiciously with the governor and convince him that this was important to the community well, that I represent. Dollars of su 100 million, 100 gallons of sewage into the harbor in August as opposed to January would have been a colossal a, a disaster totally, which we could not totally, even imagine. Totally, totally, totally. So, you know, I look at it from the perspective that once again I go back to real life experience, um, the, 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 the capacity and the ability to reach across the aisle. I'm not an ideologue like my, like, like, like my opponent is. Uh, I'm a common sense guy. I'm a bipartisan guy uh, that looks at the issue. Let's figure out from a common sense perspective, you know, what is it that we need to do to implement, you know, the best practice uh, towards getting that particular issue uh, resolved mm -hmm. and, uh, and figured out. Mm -hmm. And I say that across the board, whether it's infrastructure, a social issue, a health issue, a school issue. You know, as a former school superintendent, I understand running school superintendents. You know, I understand how the Chapter 70 formula needs to be changed. You know, from, mm -hmm. a, you know, from, from being a Barnesville Town Council, I understand how the Chapter 90, which funds roads, you know, needs to be changed. So mm -hmm. all of that needs to be applied uh, to who we are and what we are, both on Cape Cod as well, as, uh, but especially in Nantucket. So that's the real life experience uh, that I bring that, that, that my opponent never had. Mm -hmm. How do you expect to carry out the rest of your campaign between now and, and November? Well, it's 24-7. Uh, mm -hmm. We're uh, working every day. Uh, we have an uphill battle anytime you run against an incumbent, mm -hmm. um, especially one who's a D. Um, what I need to convince people is that, you know, uh, don't paint me as your, as your uh, conservative uh, right-wing mm -hmm. kind of Republican. Mm -hmm. I'm a common sense guy, fiscally responsible, socially moderate. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be careful how we spend our tax money. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I'm going to protect your life. I'm going to protect women's rights. I'm going to protect education uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, I'm a pro-choice guy. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what's really interesting, you know, it's, um, there's a number of uh, endorsements that, uh, uh, that sometimes folks get, but sometimes they get them only because they're incumbents when, in mm -hmm. fact, both the incumbent and the opponent pretty much agree 100% on the mm -hmm. particular issue, which in some respects uh, is happening to me right now. But as I started to mention, you know, with the, with the, with the endorsement of Charlie Baker, Karen Polito, Sheriff Jim Cummings, um, uh, District Attorney Michael Keefe uh, for the Cape Cod and the Islands, mm -hmm. along with the Mass Massachusetts Coalition of Police, which is the biggest statewide union mm -hmm. uh, in the state. They're all supporting my candidacy. The National Federation of Independent Business is supporting it because I understand business. I understand mm -hmm. what it means to be a small business person. And that's the backbone of not only America, it's the backbone especially of Nantucket. It's the small entrepreneur, whether you're a plumber, an electrician, um, whether you run a gift shop down on Main Street uh, or on Federal Street, uh, whether you're working, uh, you know, as a scallop or whether, whether you're working as a charter boat fisherman. You know, I understand the fishing industry, too, uh, and some of the issues that we face in terms of, you know, the, the, the overfishing of squid, the, you know, the loss of the herring run, uh, loss of herring in particular. And I'm happy to say that, that you know, we did extend. It was just changed. Yeah, yes, was we extended, which was, news. you know, wow. I was Finally, very happy to see that. Yeah. It's taken a long time. And that's also <laughs> what happens. Some of these things take so long yeah. to have happen. And, you know, I think, you know, some of the things that have happened that have helped Nantucket as well as has, have helped Cape Cod, um, my opponent's been at the right place at the right time, but a lot of the bills that have been passed that, you know, he takes credit for have been lingering, if you will, either on the House mm -hmm. side or the Senate side for years. So um, I say that, you know, once again, from the perspective of real life experience, common sense, want to do the right thing for everyone. I have a big tent. You know, I really am committed to the future. I want to be you know, the new voice for Cape Cod and the Islands. I want to be your voice. I want to be everyone who is on the Nantucket's voice, a very passionate voice that's going to do the right thing for mm -hmm. everyone. Well, I hope that we see more of you over here before November. And you will. You I'll be, uh, I will be uh, having some events uh, that we'll be publicizing. Uh, oh, I'll probably be doing an editorial board review with the uh, Inquirer Mira uh, that I'm looking forward to. And, uh, you know, once again, thank you for uh, having well, me as your guest. thank you for guest. coming. I enjoyed meeting you again. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you.